bit next to see. Oh, the switch I just had to use as a carrier. Although I was using some alfalfa pellets, I have extra of green sand when I have it. Um, and azimite and bone char, a bunch of other stuff as a carrier. Sometimes just even I'll use sand. That's all I have. Use this. The finer the mist, the better. That's just for inoculation purposes. So that's what this is here. You see that in there? That's the inoculation, which is the rhizobium organism. That's what we want. There's more clover. This is red clover. Really good. It's not terribly persistent in the pastures, but it, um, it is very beneficial. When it, for as long as it does live. Um, sometimes it will seem to come back. It will mix a whole bunch of other purple top turnips. The seed is, which is now self seeding in, around across the property. Um, more clover. Use a lot of yellow blossom sweet clover. That's a great, amazing tap rooting plant. That's what this is. And it's actually not a true clover. Um, we use vetch, alfalfa when it's the right time of year. Um, sometimes I'll just also spread um, certain plants, certain seed, even if it's a little early in the year. You know, it's hard to know exactly what the weather's going to be. So um, I give it a chance. I try to spread a lot spread really often, at least a little seed really often rather than a lot of seed just a few times. I'll spread like five to ten times a year at least. This is Ladino clover, which is a great white clover variety. And now I'll just put in some actual grass seed. None of that is actual grass seed. This is sheep fescue and orchard grass, which goes a lot further. Small seeds, so it carries across the pasture really far. All the other stuff was nitrogen fixers, um, except the purple top turnip. Um, okay, so that's good mix. Come on, Kieran Brojangles, come on. Come on, bro, Jango, let's go. Come on. Come on, come on let's go. Come on. And actually, it's really good to see what's up in the, in the first burn zone. There's already a lot up. It's getting, you know, downright green in the first zone. We can go this way. Well. So heading down to zone Zone three, four with seed, which is in May, April, May, June. Whenever I'm going down to zone three or four, I'm almost always carrying seed. Come on, Akira, let's go. Let's go. And on the way, being the fertility of the footsteps type of situation, you know, even every little bare soil area get seed. The sheep just grazed in here. Or actually, they're in this paddock now. They just were in there. It's nice to seed right after the sheep and during. Not so much before, because then they disturb the seed. Um, and so, I'm a big fan of really seeding often in the early years. It's just the results of getting pasture renovated and soil, uh, uh, an ecology that builds soil quickly is so much faster by actively bringing the biology in. I know a lot of people who are all about, you know, always talk about how it's so great they don't ever spread any seed with their animals and the pasture still come back, but I think, I mean, that's fantastic, but I think they come back a lot faster if you actually bring 
help it along with, by providing the organisms. Plus, if you don't seed, you don't get the nitrogen fixers. You don't get vetch coming up by itself usually. Sometimes you'll get clover, but you don't get the wide variety of clover. You don't get purple top turnips and daikon radish, that's for sure. You can see how green this stuff is. It was all seeded um, about starting about two weeks ago. We've had perfect seed starting weather, so it's been amazing. Um, look at and look in here. That's all clover and everything else that I'm seeding, taking really well. See that coming up. So that's, I mean, we've had this kind of British Isle style misting, which is just ideal. We're also right now somewhat out of the zone of the ducks, which helps. The ducks do eat the seed, not all of it but they will dig out any wet peas they certainly dig out. So here's the first upper, uppermost burn zone from the other day. So I'll probably come back down here at least four to six times during this season to seed it, especially after a burn like this. And I won't inoculate every time. That's the nice thing. If you get the rhizobium in, um, you know, once or twice, then I found by digging up the nitrogen fixers, you can see the root fixing nodules, or the nitrogen fixing nodules on the roots that I, I found what people say to be true, which is that you really only have to inoculate with the rhizobium once, and then, and then that organism is in place. Okay, so I need to come back down here with more seed, but at least the inoculation is done. This stuff's gonna green up really well. The seed bed already created on the other side where it's burned is, is perfect. It's just light green now coming up everywhere and getting ahead of the less optimal sedges and ferns, especially in mosses that were here. Mm -hmm.